Welcome energetic viewers to Animal World, our co-inhabitants, featuring the second in a three-part program on the fascinating research of Dr. Rupert Sheldrake. Dr. Sheldrake is an expert in the study of animal behavior and one of the world's most visionary and innovative biologists who has written more than 80 scientific papers and 10 books, including The Presence of the Past, Other Unexplained Powers of Animals, and The Rebirth of Nature. He studied biochemistry and other natural sciences at Cambridge University in England and philosophy at Harvard University in the United States before returning to Cambridge for a PhD in biochemistry. Dr. Sheldrake is a leading scientist in the investigation of animal psychic predictions and telepathic communication. He has conducted a series of experiments to answer questions like How does a canine know that their caregiver is coming home, even if he or she is miles away? His scientific findings prove that the abilities of dogs, cats and many other animal friends, whether domesticated or wild, are not confined to the physical realms. His research has shown that dogs can anticipate when their caregiver is coming home, when they are about to be fed, and when their human companion has decided to take them for a walk. Let us now hear more from Dr. Rupert Sheldrake. All animals that live in groups have to interact with each other. That's what social animals do. And the society would not survive unless they interact properly with each other in an appropriate way. And I think all social animals are organized by social fields. Termite colonies, wasps, bees, and ants, all the social insects have a kind of field that coordinates the behavior of the members. Dr. Sheldrake is also well known for his theory of morphic fields and morphic resonance, which addresses structures and organization seen in nature. It is hypothesized every living cell, tissue and organism has its own field. These fields provide an explanation for telepathic communication and suggest how members of social groups are connected even though they are kilometers apart from one another. Dr. Sheldrake says these invisible and stretchable fields not only link animal companions to members of their own species, but to their caregivers as well. They communicate by smell, by sound, but they're also communicating through a field that organizes them. Just like a magnetic field uh, influences the iron filings in its field of influence, so the social field influences the individuals. We see this with flocks of birds. A whole flock of birds can fly together and suddenly change direction without bumping into each other. Now, I think all animal groups have these fields, and they're a kind of field that I call a morphic field, a field that shapes form or pattern or organization. When members of a group go apart, for example, when wolves and a pack separate, the field doesn't break, it stretches. So it's like an invisible elastic band that continues to connect them. So when the adults decide they're coming home, the young may pick up that intention. And I think this field that links members of social groups is the basis of telepathy. It happens between bonded members of social groups. I think it happens in the wild. There's already evidence that wolves are telepathic with each other in, in the wild over many miles. I think telepathy depends on social bonds. It doesn't happen between random people and their dogs. It happens between uh, people who own a dog who have a strong bond with a dog or people who own a cat and have a strong bond with a cat. And the thing that's closest to this in physics is quantum entanglement. In quantum theory, if two particles have been part of the same system, then they move apart. Say two photons leave an atom, they can go in opposite directions. And if a change happens in one, instantaneously, the others change too. It is called quantum entanglement, quantum non-locality. That's the same with telepathy. Telepathy doesn't seem to fall off with distance. Some people say that everything in nature falls off with distance. But that's not true. The thing that it's closest to, the most closely analogous physical process, quantum entanglement, doesn't fall off with distance. One of the other theories of telepathy is uh, put forward by Dean Radin, a colleague of mine in California. Um, and Dean uh, wrote a book called Entangled Minds, where he suggests that when we interact with other people, we form bonds and links with them, emotional and social bonds, our minds become entangled, as in quantum entanglement. 
uh, so they remain linked at a distance. It may be he and I are saying the same thing in different words, um, because these really amount to a very similar kind of theory. Telepathy can have a scientific explanation. Um, I've done research that shows uh, that it really does depend on social bonds. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of parapsychology, laboratory research on telepathy in the past, um, assumed that it worked just between anyone. So they took complete strangers and they did experiments using emotionally non-stimulating, meaningless symbols. So if you have strangers looking at meaningless symbols with no emotional impact, you get a very weak effect. If you have uh, people or animals that are strongly bonded with something with a big emotional impact, you get a much stronger effect. And that's why in my own research I concentrate on much more natural, biological things. Dogs are emotionally excited when their owners come home. It's a big deal for a dog. And in the human parapsychology experiments, they're very boring. And after a few trials, people's scores tend to fall off because they get bored. Luckily, dogs never get bored of their owners coming home, so they do this over and over again. We asked Dr. Sheldrake to tell us, based on his research, the species he sees as having the strongest social bonds with humans. I would say dogs and African grey parrots are the ones that seem the most sensitive, but they're the ones that form the strongest bonds. Now cats do these things too. About 50% of dogs know when their owners are coming home, compared with about 30% of cats. I don't think that proves that cats are necessarily less sensitive. I think it just means that some of them are less interested. Not all cats are as closely bonded to their owners. Dr. Sheldrake now shares his views on telepathic animal communicators and their gift that enables them to converse with animals. Animal communicators claim to be able to form bonds with animals that they don't know previously. I think this is an exceptional ability. They have to have a link to the animal, either through the person or through a photo or through hearing the dog barking or through being on the phone and being able to uh, be in contact with the animal somehow. That link uh, could be enough for a very sensitive person to establish a telepathic connection. In my opinion, the very best test of animal communicators is being able to find lost animals. And some of them claim to be able to do that. Um, sometimes people lose their animals, especially cats, which roam free and they get shut into people's garages by mistake. You often see signs in the street round here in London, lost cat, and there's a picture of a cat. That's a field in which some animal communicators do quite well. They're able to tune into the cat from a photograph and say where it is, and the person finds it. But again, you can't really do experiments on this very easily. You can't ask people to lose their pets on purpose. I suppose you could hide the pet and see if the communicator could find it. Um, so perhaps you could do experiments like that. In the early 1980s, Dr. Sheldrake introduced his brilliant theory on morphic resonance. The intriguing theory says there is a non-local database filled with information to which animals and humans continually tune in and contribute. It is thought this database influences the development of all species over time. Dr. Sheldrake now explains the differences between this theory and the extraordinary power of telepathy found in animals. There are different phenomena here. One is telepathy, which is the connection between members of a social group, where you have to have a bond and the connection is direct and people uh, can pick up animals' emotions, animals can pick up people's emotions and feelings. There's another phenomenon, which is morphic resonance. It's a kind of collective memory. For morphic resonance to work, all that matters is similarity. Now, all the members of a species are similar in some degree, um, and that theory makes different predictions. That theory predicts that if you train rats to learn a new trick in England, then rats all over the world, in China, in New Zealand, in America, um, they'll all be able to learn the same thing quicker because the rats have learned it here because they're tuning into a collective memory. There's already experimental evidence that that actually happens. I discuss this in my book, A New Science of Life and uh, the Presence of the Past. The 
same applies to humans. If humans learn a new skill, like windsurfing, for example, or playing a particular kind of video game, then um, the ability to do this should spread around the world. Other people should be able to do it quicker, even if they've never met the people who've done it before. Dr. Sheldrake, we thank you for introducing to us your enlightening research on animal telepathy and behavior. Your wonderful efforts are paving the way for humans to better understand the animal kingdom, thus helping us to establish closer relationships with our animal friends. For more details on Rupert Sheldrake, please visit www.sheldrake.org. Books and DVDs by Dr. Sheldrake are available at the same website. Please join us next Saturday on Animal World, our co-inhabitants, as we conclude our interview with Dr. Rupert Sheldrake. Thank you, kind viewers, for joining us today on our program. Coming up next is enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May your life be blessed with abundant health and inner peace. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AW.